so we are doing about uh, close to 4 million a day right now. I think we need to further accelerate it and take it to about 7.5 and then further accelerate it to about 10 million a day. The challenge is that in the month of May and June, there may be a little bit of demand and supply imbalance for which we need to import. But July onwards, there should be adequate supply of manufacturing from Indian manufacturing because of uh, new products which will come out. And therefore, we should be able to accelerate. But the challenge really would be that we should be able to ensure that it, this pandemic is not going to be remain a pandemic. It will become endemic. And therefore, you need to keep vaccinating your population every six months. Uh, our variant of concern, which WHO has declared, is actually a variant which has come in from UK. And there's been another variant which came in from South Africa. So it's not a fight for India. It's a, it's a global fight. The variant from here will go to other places. And I think it's important to understand that this fight has to be a global flight. We have to be all in together for it and therefore all of us has to work in partnership global partnership uh, because india is a very large country it's not like singapore it's bigger than 24 countries of europe and therefore the challenge of providing vaccine to a billion people together is a huge challenge Sir, it's Nancy coming into the conversation here, and we understand this is an enormous challenge, and it's so important to focus on the here and now in terms of increasing the supply of vaccines, but many who have been impacted by this tragedy are still wondering, I mean, how is it so that the world's largest maker of vaccine products essentially fell short when it came to supplying their own people? I mean, what message would you send? What are the lessons that are already being learned about how wrong this rollout did go initially? So the key message to my mind is that the, uh, the velocity of the virus was extremely furious in the second phase. It was unbelievable. And, uh, uh, you know, just in a matter of weeks, it, uh, it was so fast and furious, especially in the urban areas. And along with that, we had uh, elections in a vast democracy like India, when you have elections, you have a lot of uh, congregation taking place. And this really brings to my mind that uh, this battle cannot be fought by governments alone. It has to be a battle by the community. And every single village, every single rural area, every single district, every community, and particularly the civil society organizations, everyone, the non-governmental organizations, every each one of them, uh, this has to be a battle fought by the community along with the government. Everyone has to work in partnership. And that is the key lesson which has to be learned from India.